Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you know who this is it's Blackheart the blackest man on YouTube so black as even in the name those of you who know me in person are saying wait a minute ain't you uh Assalamu alaikum how are you my brother? Assalamu alaikum how are you my brother? how are you my brother? how are you my brother? Uh, yeah, there you go. So black, he speaks Zulu to other English teachers. How about that? Uh, so yeah, uh, y'all know what to do. You know what I'm going to ask you to, to press, and you know why I'm going to ask you to press it. That being said, Uncle Rom was right. Debate is useless. Women will choose the select. But see, that sentence etymologically could not be incorrect because look at the words, look at the meanings. Choose, select. These are the same meanings. The noun uh, or adjective select pretty much just means selected, right? So uh, the verb choose and select are the same thing. So how could the sentence be wrong? Yes, debate has to be uh, useless in a case like that. Must be. And that's okay. I'm not knocking wrong. He's correct in saying that because um uh, the women choose who is select in that particular market. Employers choose who is select in the job market. Don't forget. So, yeah, whoever has to make the choice chooses who is select. A woman can choose who is select on an individual level, but women aggregately choose who is select overall. These definitions must be the case. I get it. But let's look at some other stuff going on here now. You see, we can't debate about that, but we can debate about the definition and the criteria for select if, in fact, one cultural group's criteria began to make no sense or they become dysgenic and they serve nobody, not even uh, the women doing the choosing. That means something, and many of us don't want to admit that. Many of us still, and I, I'm, I'm waiting on these PUAs to come to grips with the fact that the Western woman, white and black alike, have a dysgenic set of standards. It's not uh, the masculinity and it's certainly not the muscle that they prefer that makes them abnormal, but the, uh, the exaggeration of association of kindness and agreeability with weakness. Um, are a problem. These are not normal. Now, you take Jordan Peterson, and in his circle, in his world, uh, he is, in fact, a strong man because he doesn't just automatically agree with people. He can be kind and polite, but he doesn't just agree with people and see things their way. But see, among black folks, you can't be like Jordan Peterson. You can't talk like he does and be that skinny. Even as an adult, you can't do it. You can be right, you can give facts, but you got to deal with the sapphire that's going to cut you off and roll a neck and snap her fingers and talk louder than you. And you got to deal with her loud country friends who are going to back her up. <laughs> Not only that, you got to deal with the matriarchal mandingos who the women want and approve of because they got muscle and they're going to be up in your face trying to fight you to get the approval of women. Are you effing kidding me? Are you serious? And this is normal? No, 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 no. We have, like I've said before, Western women have the mating standards of the bighorn sheep, and that is exaggerated because the bighorn sheep have been around for more generations than human beings. I don't know how many millions of years they've been around, but they're certainly likely to be more than human beings as well. So the number of generations that they've been around is also, um, the number of generations that they have been around, that's also going to be a lot more than human beings. They've been around because their generations are not as, as long as ours. So what does this tell you? Well, what this says to you is this. They've been around so long that they've already weeded out the weak ma males. That's already been done. So now you have the same instinct, but what, what, what this instinct has done is it, uh, it has um, threatened the population with genetic bottlenecking. So you can have nothing but strong men out there having these babies. What happens when these babies are all related after a certain number of generations? All these babies are related. But their genes are strong. Well, if they're related, 
and they start mating with each other, not even knowing they're related, that's going to weaken the genes as well. So even this natural selection argument can be shot down with that because the women's instinct can lead to genetic bottlenecking. It's not the male's instinct that does that, it's the women's. It's the females. And we're dealing with that in Western culture. I mean, you all saw the Ayanla Van Zandt show where you had a few black men that had a bunch of babies by many black women. I mean, what was it, six of them? It was six or four, it was an even number and it was in the single digits and it wasn't eight. And it wasn't two, so it was six or four. I remember that. And these dudes stood up. How many kids did they have? Something like 87 kids between them. And, it, and all of them were, were with several women except one of them, he had uh, two baby mothers. And that's what I got. Three kids, two baby moms. I'm one of them. But you, you looked at the rest of them, four, 12, the numbers went up there. Gentlemen, we, it, look, debate is useless. It's the dysgenic breeding standard. Other cultures don't have this. Genghis Khan, well, yeah, they suspected he did, but they're not sure about his DNA anyway. So it is speculation. If it is true, Genghis Khan was an anomaly. He was very brutish. He conquered a lot. He had a bunch of kids. But we have to ask ourselves, are we still at that stage of human development or have we surpassed it? Now, if we're still at that stage, okay, well, then, yeah, by all means. But then if that's the case, you know, we've had enough generations to still go past it to a certain extent. So that means that, you know, men can just go out and, can, and that means that men don't even need to waste energy conquering each other. We just go out and conquer women. That's it. I ain't got to fight you. All I got to do is say, look, there's some women that y'all don't want. Who are these women? Now sell them. If it's really going to be all that, I don't think it is. But if it was the case, that's what we would be at. Debate is useless. The choose to select. But debate is also useless about something else. The response to that is because we see that there's something wrong with the criteria and there is something wrong with it. And we're waiting on select guys to admit this. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, well, look, the game is rigged and we don't have to play it. We can move to where we actually are select. And what's the reason we're select? Well, I mean, come on. The reason we're select is because other cultures are normal most of the time, and not all the time, but most of the time, and our culture is not normal. So we're gonna go where things are normal, and we are somewhat select. At least the reactions to us are mixed. And at the very least, the ones who don't find us to be select don't also find us to be hateful and have a contempt for us. Either they don't hate us and decide that we're good for nothing more than just being taken advantage of and paying the pussy price for those who are select. Because that's what we're dealing with in the West. Debate is useless. We now know the game. Debate is useless. We're going to tell young men the game. And when I say young men, I'm talking middle school and older. We're going to tell them the game. Maybe even elementary school. Debate is useless. We're not even going to listen to their mothers when their mothers come and say, don't you poison my son against women. No, you fuck the shuck up. If for me to be able to tell him these things means either his dad isn't telling him because he doesn't know or because you won't let him or because he, his dad is not there to tell him. Whichever one is the case, it's out of my hands. It ain't my business. I was able to tell him, so I told him, debate is useless. You're not going to accept debate for me if I go to you and I say you stop poisoning your daughter against males and making it harder for my son you will not accept debate you will respond to that by saying you just one of them men that we need to watch out for and you want easy victims so that's why you got a problem with it and I'm gonna keep an eye on you and as soon as you slip I'm calling the cops see that's why we need to start flipping it back on them and start saying to them Okay, well, see, you just don't want me to tell him because you wanted the women that he needs to watch out for, his own mother. But you don't want him to know about that because you don't want him to know who you are. And you don't want him to know who these other women are because you're looking out for other women you never met more than you were looking out for your own flesh and blood son. Flip it on him. Debate is useless. I'm going to tell you this. Some have asked me why I'm single. There have been multiple reasons. I've mentioned it before. But one of the things I learned early on was that by me playing the game the way that women play it, attractive women get up and run. Why is that? They play the game to win. We 
young guys are socialized initially to think that this game is one of cooperation and not competition. And a few guys, for whatever reason, come to realize it is a competition and not cooperation. And they become, uh, uh, if they realize it at a young enough age and get the attitude to go with it, they become the sexual alphas that the women want. Most men don't know this because ain't nobody telling this to us. We got to figure it out over time, and by that time, it's too late. So, when you play the game this way, like it is a competition, and they're playing to win, so that means you must play to win, then they get up and they run. Why do they do that? It's simple. Just start looking at your dignity and start making decisions to protect that, and they will, they will take issue with that. They will have problems because you're not giving your dignity up for them to take advantage of you. Just that. See it like this. They want to take your social status and your money, and they want to put you through as much difficulty as possible in exchange for some of that punani, right? In exchange for that peace leave. But there's some other guy that ain't putting through none of that stuff. Now, you decide that you're going to go through as little difficulty as possible, even though you're going to respect her and you're not going to try to take away her dignity. Just you're not going to go through difficulty in exchange for that punani. You're not going to go through any difficulty in exchange for that pussy that she ain't going to go through in exchange for your dingling. Just that and watch her fit the guck up and run. Why? You figured out the game. Watch her start to slander you just for that. No argument, you just realized the game and you weren't about to lose it, she'll slander you. Why is that? Because if you figured out the game, you might tell this to others and she has to make it seem like you're already a loser with women before you can start to tell them this. It took me until a few minutes ago to figure that out. Why was I being blamed by women for stuff I didn't do after maybe one date, not even trying to holler at them sometimes? Just meeting them. Why was that? Because they figured out early on that whatever they were not gonna go through in exchange for a, a normal man's penis, even when they wanted that man, I wasn't going to go through an exchange for their um, private parts. And that's all it took. It didn't take anything else. Nothing else was necessary. That's all that was needed. And they said, no, 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 we're not doing this. And then they start going and saying stuff to make me look bad in front of other men and mostly in front of other women. Well, I didn't know what the reason was. Now I get it. His dingling's not easy. I can't manipulate him. So... He might have figured something out, so I'm going to turn around and I'm going to tell people that something's wrong so that when he, if he does say anything, then other guys will automatically dismiss what he says. And here I was not even knowing a whole lot of stuff about him, still confused by them. Debate is useless. Flip it on them, and that's the end of it. Understand this, though. What is it that you have to flip on them? Like I said... We're socialized to think it is a game of cooperation and it is one of competition. They're not only playing to win, they're playing for you to lose, specifically. Their goal is to get somebody else's DNA, and these men are so few and far between that we all know only a few of them. The goal is to get these dudes' DNA and to get your resources to raise their DNA, not even your own. And for them to even spit one of your kids out, they have to feel that it's necessary to do in order to get you to raise somebody else's DNA. That's what, it, that's what it takes. One of the ways you will know that you're not one of the men they really want is that they never want to have your baby first. That's how you can tell. How easy is it for you to get her pregnant with her first child? Now, if you can't do that, you ain't her type. I mean, according to her, if you just got a vasectomy and you can't do it, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you uh, wanted her to have her first child from you and you can't do it. How easy is that? Look at the kind of women that you cannot get pregnant with their first child. And that's the women that feel like they're too good for you. They don't just feel like they're too good for they feel like you are not even equal to other men morally because of your DNA or what they think is your DNA. Now, that's what the, that's the competition right there. Get this nigga's resources to raise this other guy's baby. And we all want the same men to have their babies. That's what, how these women are thinking. Now you must understand this is a competition. It is not a cooperation. This is how many of them are playing it. Of course, not all, but the vast majority. Even if they don't know they're doing it. Debate is useless. They are playing this like it is either business or war. And you must play to win. And you must understand that the mating and marriage game 
is similar to war first, similar to business second, and it is similar to romance last, if at all, as far as they are concerned. And when you come to realize this, you figured it out 90% of it. And this is why it is that debate becomes useless. They don't want you. This must be the truth because this is what they don't want you to tell others, even if you can show the studies to back it up. This is, this is what must be the truth because they will keep proving this behaviorally, even in front of those who are studying them. They will do it again and again and again. They'll never change this. Yet and still, they'll deny it every time while not changing it. And understand how deep this goes, gentlemen. Debate is useless. The American Eugenic Society had to have meetings to determine that they were going to be a eugenic society and what they were going to be about was determined in these meetings. They had to openly discuss this. Western women never had to have a mass meeting to sit down and discuss this. In about three generations, in roughly a 90 year period or a century, in about that length of time, just three generations without them all getting together and having one meeting, they became more eugenicist than the American Eugenic Society could have ever been. They sat up and looked and said, we don't even want most of these men to have babies. We don't believe that they should even have orgasms. They, not only that, they should spend their whole lives sexually frustrated and forced into celibacy. In other words, Whatever the word incel means, which is, you know, it means involuntarily celibate, they look at most men with such a contempt for them that they feel these men should be that. Most men should be exactly that, involuntarily celibate. And at a few of them, because of their height and muscles and social status and money and resources, should be blessed to have orgasms inside of vaginas and have their own children. That's how they feel. And at other men, in exchange for just the possibility of not being an incel, should be forced to uh, accept the deal of them providing all the resources and taking all the responsibility for these other men's babies. That's what they feel like. Now that is beyond the American Eugenic Society at this point, and they never had to have one meeting to discuss this and agree on this. It either came in through the media or it came to them naturally. Whichever one is the case, debate is useless. You have to fight this war to win it. And they're not fighting just to win. They're fighting so that they win and for you to lose. Because if you're a regular man, they don't want you really having access to any kind of sex except homosex, to be honest with you. That's why they don't mind throwing you in prison on a false allegation. What is that about? Castrating you, putting you somewhere where there's no access to women? and a, a higher likelihood of being raped by another man because you don't like that, because you, you're not designed for that. They have that kind of contempt for you based on you being a normal run-of-the-mill guy. Anything other than that top 14%. You're not that, you're a creep. And if you are a creep, you're a genetic inferior to them and you should not have access to any vagina at all. Even if a woman likes you when you like her, you should not have access to her in their minds. You should be thrown away, locked up, and the key thrown away. And that's why it is that they'll hope to God that a man is in jail for a longer sentence based on his appearance or based on his poverty. But you take a man who's got muscles and abs, and they want that man out, and they don't even ask what kind of crime he committed. That's why that experiment was done in London. That man put up that he had a conviction for um, a, a child pedo. And... Women were, were texting him and just talking to him and everything. Oh, yeah, they're playing this game not just to win, but for you, the normal man, to lose because they actually hate you as a normal man. Debate is useless. Play to win. Simply by doing that, you will drive the idiots away from you. They'll choose the select. You choose to not lose. And don't debate about it. I hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.